Welcome to the second lecture in the presenting lecture series. Now that we have covered how you can overcome stage fright, let's talk about how you can really set yourself apart with your presentation by having your presentation stick, which means to have a lasting impression on your audience members. This part of the presentation is based on the book Made to Stick, written by Chip and Dan Heap. I highly recommend you purchase it if you are interested in improving your presentation performance. Before we start, let's think about a few things. What percentage of listeners at business presentations do you think admits to daydreaming? Please pause the lecture video and answer for yourself. Studies show 91% of listeners at business presentations admitted to daydreaming. What percentage of listeners at business presentations do you think admits to falling asleep? Please pause the lecture video and answer for yourself. Studies show an impressive 39% admits to downright falling asleep at some point in time. Obviously, you don't want to be the presenter that puts his audience to sleep. Now think very hard about the last presentation that you attended and really loved. What was different about this presentation? Please pause the lecture video and write down how the last presentation you loved was different from other presentations. Please keep your list and look at it again when this lecture is over. We are going to focus on how to try to make our presentation stick better when following the guidelines in the book Made to Stick. A sticky idea or a sticky presentation gets the audience to pay attention, understand and remember, agree or disagree, and care. We will try to make our presentations stick better by following six principles that together spell out success. The principles are simple, unexpected, concrete, credible, emotional, and stories. I remember when the first MP3 devices came out and I totally didn't understand what they were. Steve Jobs made us understand what MP3 could do for customers. It could give you a thousand songs in your pocket. He took the core idea of the technology and stated it in the most compact way. When doing your presentation, it will be key to omit what is not needed. If you are able to bring your core ideas in the most compact way possible, you will successfully subscribe to the principle of keeping your presentation simple. It is actually very hard to bring a presentation that is simple, especially when your topic is not. Despite the difficulty of simplifying your presentation to its core ideas, it can be so much more compelling. Look at the example here with regards to the mission to land on the moon. One way to state that mission is to become the international leader in the space industry through team-centered innovation and strategically targeted aerospace initiatives. John F. Kennedy announced it in a much more simple yet also appealing way to put a man on the moon and return him safely by the end of the decade. PowerPoint has been blamed for being a poor presentation tool, but it isn't. However, the design of your PowerPoint slides can be. We have been in all too many presentations with unappealing slides covered in huge amounts of text, causing us to lose interest within the first minute of the presentation. The key with PowerPoint, as much as any other presentation tool, is to keep it simple. While you can say a lot more than what's on your slide, not everything that you are planning on saying should be on there. Bad slides will make it very hard for you to make your presentation sticky, and they will set you up for failure. As a matter of fact, slides with a lot of text are a telltale sign of a presenter who didn't practice sufficiently. Also, given the richness of media that you can find online these days, it is inexcusable to show up with poorly developed slides drenched in text. The second success principle is unexpected. If you give a presentation, your first challenge is to make people pay attention. Your second, even harder challenge is to keep their attention. Doing something unexpected yet relevant to your presentation can dramatically improve your ability to keep people's attention. However, it is more difficult to come up with ideas of how to implement something unexpected yet relevant in your presentation. 
It will take time and effort for you to come up with ideas of how to do something unexpected yet relevant, but it will not miss its effect. Let's look at an example of how to use the success principle of unexpected to make a presentation more sticky. This is Rebecca Fuller. She is the founder of RAF Models, a group that creates tactile museum exhibits that guests can touch. These are particularly great for visually impaired guests. Here is an example of one such tactile museum exhibit of Pearl Harbor. Rebecca Fuller had to give a critical presentation to a group of museum directors, and she wanted the museum directors to see how important it is to push beyond visual exhibits only. So she started the presentation with a bang. She had a colleague kill the lights abruptly, leaving the room in complete darkness. And then she said, this is what it's like to be a blind person in most museums. There is nothing to learn, nothing to experience, because all the good stuff is in a medium that is off limits to you. She successfully focused her audience's attention on the problem she wants to solve. Now contrast this with what most of us would do in their presentation. We would start our presentation with a statement like this. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of the challenges faced by the visually impaired in visiting museums. You can feel how differently this would affect your audience, right? For another video exemplifying how you can do something unexpected, please watch the video on the Southwest Airlines steward on the YouTube channel in the presenting playlist. Here are some things you can think about when trying to come up with something unexpected for your presentation. You can try to break a pattern, open a knowledge gap, pose a question or puzzle, challenge people to predict an outcome, or use a mystery story. While you are working on doing something unexpected, don't forget to keep it simple, the first success principle we covered. The third success principle is concrete. It is very important to try to be as concrete as possible with your message and to illustrate abstract concepts with examples. Similarly, I could just tell you that I want you to do well on assignments without being concrete on what doing well means. Instead, you are provided with concrete grading rubrics that allow you to self-evaluate any assignments before handing them in. Let's look at some other examples of how to improve the concreteness of your presentation. Let's say you wanted to talk about caloric density. It's a bit of an abstract idea to grasp, and it would help your audience very much if you could be concrete with regards to what caloric density is. This image illustrates the idea of caloric density very efficiently. You can see three stomachs filled with foods of a very different caloric density. We see oil, beef, and vegetables respectively. You can immediately tell that the caloric density, the average calories per weight of oil is very high. You can see that from this picture because the amount of vegetables on the right would weigh much more than the same calories an oil would weigh. A very low weight of oil still results in many calories, whereas you can eat many vegetables to reach the same amount of calories. The fourth success principle is credible. There are two types of credibility you can draw on in your presentation, external and internal credibility. External credibility exists when someone you trust believes it, such as a scientist. Internal credibility exists when things make sense and therefore people believe them. It would be much more credible to state that high blood pressure can have bad health consequences if you can quote a medical professional or draw on medical research. An unfortunate example of external credibility is the number of models who have portrayed the Marlboro Man which subsequently died of smoking-related diseases. One of them, McLaren, testified in favor of anti-smoking legislation. Another model, Eric Lawson, appeared in an anti-smoking commercial that parodied the Marlboro Man. Another way to make your presentation more credible is by increasing internal credibility, which you can do by providing details, statistics, and passing the Sinatra test. Details make an idea more tangible and real, so therefore they increase credibility. How common do you think shark attacks are? Are you concerned about a shark attack when you venture into the ocean? Here are some of the facts. Less than half of a person dies in a shark attack on an annual basis. 
So on average, only one person dies of a shark attack in more than two years. You are actually 25 times more likely to drown and you are 300 times more likely to get killed in an automotive collision with deer. Finally, you can also dramatically improve internal credibility if you can pass the Sinatra test. What is it that Sinatra says about success in his song, New York, New York? Have you heard of the famous saying, if I can make it in New York, I can make it anywhere? You pass the Sinatra test of internal credibility if you can give just one example that proves the point. For example, if you designed Apple's latest website, it would give you much credibility in terms of your ability to design any website. Similarly, if you wrote for the Wall Street Journal, you can probably write for any other journal as well. The fifth success principle is emotional. If you can make your audience care, the stickiness of your message increases immediately. Mother Teresa, who won the 1979 Nobel Peace Prize, said that the key to act upon injustice is to look at the one, because if one looks at the mass, people will never act. It is when looking at the one that you create the conditions for people to care. Many charity organizations know this and have moved away from the description like the one you see here. Food shortages in Malawi are affecting more than 3 million children. In Zambia, an estimated 3 million people face hunger. More than 11 million people in Ethiopia need immediate food assistance. Charity organizations have changed this into descriptions like this that move to the one. Brokia is desperately poor and faces the threat of severe hunger or even starvation. Her life will be changed for the better as a result of your gift. Please look at the following three videos which are very sticky because of their ability to make us care. They are in the presenting playlist on YouTube. Last but not least, the sixth success principle is stories. Stories are as ancient as humankind and people of all ages can get caught up in them. Telling a good story can make your message very sticky. Have you heard of this story about business travelers waking up in a bath full of ice? Please pause the video lecture and read the story. You've just read one of the most successful urban legends of the past 15 years. You've probably heard of the Kidney High's tale before. There are hundreds of versions in circulation, and all of them share a core of three elements. First, the drug it drank. Second, the ice-filled bathtub. And three, the kidney theft punchline. Imagine that you took an hour-long break, then called a friend and told the story without rereading it. Chances are you told it almost perfectly. The kidney heist is a story that sticks. We understand it, we remember it, and we can retell it later. And if we believe it's true, it might change our behavior permanently, at least in terms of accepting drinks from attractive strangers. This ends the discussion of the six success principles of Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath.